course gives us a couple weeks between this October 3rd that a lot of people believe that you need to start by. But if you if you're able to do that and you do take that uh, the championship game out of there, there certainly is plenty of opportunity to get to that magical six weeks that everybody seems to believe. You know, some of the schlep rocks out there who have been hating on all this are like, well, a lot of places don't even have their players on campus right now. They have these things. They're called planes and cars. And if you, you, know, you know what? If, if, if you're really that dedicated to this, you're going to get your ass back on campus and get ready to play. I mean, it's, it's just there are so many, so many Debbie Downers out there right now about this that are not about embracing solutions, that just want to find more problems with the situation. I mean, it, 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 it's sickening. It's sickening, and I'm disgusted by it. I, I can't even get on Twitter just half the time because I can't even read half this crap. And that's just from Steve. Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm. Um, I I made my feelings pretty plain last week. Sh- last week's show, I'm just saying, I was utterly disgusted. I had people checking on me for my well being after last <laughs> week's show. To be honest with you, people are like, "You seem so depressed by this, and uh, so upset, so irate." And you know, there's a lot of of feeling involved in this and and again we're no closer to any of the any of the answers to why this was done or why anybody thought this was a great thing that uh, needed to be done at this time and uh, i don't know if we'll ever get get to the full bottom of it uh, the big 10 and commissioner warren have done a great job of keeping a lid on uh, on on what on their message and the message that comes out it's not a fulfilling message, that's for sure. Uh, no one's no one's happy with any of their explanations, and um, I don't know. I'm just uh, I, I just continue to be dumbfounded by the whole thing. And um, you know, people are asking. I mean, this stuff's happening. You know, in real time here, people are wanting to know. Well, if you play in November, can you get into the playoff? Well. Gee, I, I don't know. Would they let you in if you only play half the number of games of the rest of the schools by the time the playoff field is set? So who the heck knows? I'm, uh, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just still a little bit down in the dumps about the whole thing and uh, doing the best I can to cope with it and and to move forward. So um, I don't know. I'm just, uh, just kind of dumbfounded by the whole thing. It's I know, funny because I, I cope with it like this. You know. <laughs> my my wife told me this week that her and her sister were texting back and forth. Like, I don't think Tony's doing so good. I think he he needs football. And it's like, yeah, maybe maybe I wasn't in the best mood this week, and maybe I am just you know I was I was looking for a high school game to travel to on Saturday. I just I just want to go somewhere. I just want to go and and do football, and and I can't. And it's. You, may, and, and I don't want to also like get my hopes up that it's coming this fall. You know, I'm, I'm on board with January because you know, that that's like this glimmer of hope that um, makes more sense than starting in November, I guess. Like, like I saw somebody talking about Ohio state and Michigan open the season at the Rose bowl, January 1st. And I'm thinking to put them, put home jerseys on both of those teams and let's do it. Let's, uh, if it's a season opener, that would be like the one time I, I could be okay with Ohio State, Michigan being the season opener. You put it out in the Rose Bowl and make it special. Separate your season from everybody else, but to have it just be the the tag along, the little brother of the ongoing season, where no, you don't get to get you don't get to be included in in the fun stuff after ten o'clock or whatever. You get to go home and and then everybody else gets to go have fun. Yeah, that's this. It's it would not be ideal. And I, I don't know how you come back from that as like the decision makers, like how, where is the, the, where is that decision making? Where, where is the reasoning behind that? And as we still wait for the reasoning behind the initial decision, which the judge gave the big 10 until Friday or until Monday, I believe to answer uh, some of the Nebraska players charges and we'll see what goes from there. And, um, you know, I, it sure seems like maybe the Big Ten is thinking this is just too much of a pain. Let's just, you know what? Let, maybe let's just have football. It's just creating too much of a too much of an annoyance to not have it. And plus, when the Big Ten lawyer is like, 
it would be incredibly harmful to reveal the documents from the president's meetings, then maybe if you don't want to be incredibly harmed, have some football instead. The only time I've ever heard a lawyer make that case, oh, it would be incredibly harmful, is when they know their client has done something wrong. If they had nothing to hide and were completely transparent with this decision and stand behind this decision, they should be shouting from the rooftops what the reasons were, and they're not. They're not shouting from any rooftops. They're trying to hide in their ivory tower and uh, hide behind this attorney who I assume was a local person from uh, Lincoln or Omaha who was entrusted to jump in there real quick unless they flew somebody from Chicago there at a moment's notice to answer that lawsuit. Um, I don't know. I, um, I, 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 I just... Not, nothing the Big Ten does in this case surprises me. Um, they have acted and hidden, and uh, there's just no transparency at all. The heart thing was a big deal the first day and hasn't been mentioned once by anybody since. I talked, so, to, I talked to an attorney about this, and uh, I'm going to just read a little snippet of what he said about that certain instance, though. He said that the attorney, being the Big Ten attorney, is saying that allowing a plaintiff to a to obtain that discovery if they don't have a claim in the first place sets the terrible precedent, which is arguably true. So the argument is whether or not that they truly have a claim here at this point. So, you know, and this is one attorney, and obviously we're going to have attorneys that are all over uh, across the board on what their views are or whatnot. This is a guy that I trust the legal opinion of and spoke to about it. But I do agree that the optics of the way that they came out and said, well, it would be really, really bad if we were able, if we had to present this or whatnot. Certainly sounds like that there's something, you know, that there's something to hide there. You know, this attorney I spoke to said that, you know, maybe it wasn't exactly presented the right way. But the fact that uh, they've been pretty scared of everything that Tom Mars has been saying in terms of the FOIA requests and whatnot, I, I just you know, maybe, maybe I need to be fitted for my tinfoil hat, but I just really think that something, something stinks behind the scenes and we, you know, have not gotten there yet. We've all been covering the big 10 long enough that we don't need fitted for the hats. We have them in the corner. True. Good, good, good point. Um, you know, this conference operates in a shadow of silence, it seems. And, uh, you know, strange things happen like Rutgers in Maryland out of nowhere. And uh, I don't know. It, it just, you know, I, I come back, you know, I, I've used this analogy a number of times in the 1990s. I think the Western athletic conference and the mountain West are combined into one league. Uh, um, they, they had split off and then they got together as one large 16 team league with each league's champions playing in, the championship game. And the problem that you had was one team would win and there'd be 15 losers and 15 unhappy fan bases, even though it's just the mountain West, there's still people out there who care about football. And eventually it disbanded and went back to separate 18 leagues because you just can't keep 16 divergent fan bases and college cultures. What's true at BYU isn't the same at, uh, San Diego State isn't the same at Boise State, you know, just the all politics is local type thing. And so um, I wonder if we're starting to see some of that within the Big Ten and, and that, that some relationships will be fracturing. And, uh, you know, when the new TV deal comes up in three years, could there be a new bargaining unit that uh, puts together a cabal of some of these teams and and they just go off on their own and form their own conference? because you know, the money adds up. If you follow the money, you know, the schools got $55 million a piece last year. The overall deal had to have then been worth at least $750 million. So if you got rid of the riffraff and just had an eight or nine team or 10 team football league with Ohio State and other like-minded schools, you know, and, and you took that, that, 750 million and divided that's 75 million if you're able to push that to a billion dollars that's a hundred million 
uh, for each one of those schools. So to me, I think there's something out there. I think, you know, whether it's broadcast TV, cable TV, streaming, whatever it is, there's something bigger and better on the horizon. Maybe Netflix gets involved in it. I don't, I'm just thinking outside the box, but it could be time for, you know, a changing of the way that we, you know, a paradigm shift of, of what we look at when we think about Big Ten football that's been around since 1896, it may not look the same in 2025. So, um, you know, th things change over time, and uh, maybe it's time for like-minded institutions that value things a certain way to break off and do things the way they want to do them. I've, I've, I've agreed with that for a long time. I've said that at the end of these rights deals and the Big Ten is the first major conference to come up with the end of their TV deal. I don't know if we're going to just see it be a 10. I, I think it's going to be more of a fracture from the from the NC2A, per se. I don't think it, or for Division One FBS. I think you see X amount of teams who are able to, you know, at, at one point when cost of attendance were the, were the buzzwords, be able to make those types of payments, be able to do the things that are necessary. And now that we've got name, image, likeness, all of that coming out, I think that you're just going to have a fracture of the 130 teams that are FBS to where it's going to be 36, 48 teams that are the haves and everybody else. Well, you guys still can have the old traditional system at this point. And you do bring in somebody like a Netflix or an Amazon or, or you really do think outside of the box in terms of, where your TV dollars are going to be in your streaming, because so much of it now streaming as well too. You get your streaming dollars to be able to, to make that happen. And you have the teams that you do that are, are willing to go that extra level in terms of, of cost of attendance, name, image, likeness, et cetera, et cetera, to be able to feel the highest level of championship football and kind of go from there. And I think you end up having to have a recertification process where just because you're in there doesn't mean that you're in there for good. If you sit there and you start coming up and you're just, uh, as I liken to NASCAR, a start and park guy, you sit there, you make the field, you run a couple laps and you park it and you just collect your entry purse, you know, you're out. I mean, you have to be competitive. And I think that would help, uh, you know, I think that would help make the game more exciting. And it certainly would free us from some of these bottlenecks. I do wonder what happens in terms of the, the academic side where, you have these research institutions. Do you just separate football from from the Big Ten? Uh, you know, like Notre Dame is a different like d different programs have teams, sports in different conferences. Notre Dame's in the the ACC for basketball, but not not football. Is this a thing where football is separate and the and basketball stays in the Big Ten and Big Ten stays as is? But Ohio State and Michigan go off. Ohio State, Michigan, Nebraska, Penn State go off and become part of this elite, um, you know, like the, the college football FBS elite division. And then um, you have, cause I, I still think like the group of fives should all play for national play for their own national title. So I, I you know, if, if you go up and you have this elite division, then the programs behind them outside of that elite division should play for their own national title. And I know UCF and those schools don't think they should have to, but, how are your national titles doing? You know, and, and Boise State, wh where where are your rings? Where's your, where's your national championship? You you guys clamored for the playoffs. You've got the playoffs. How many times have you been there? So just, I I want I want I want those games to mean more, like the group of five stuff. And so yeah, if you want to go and create an elite level of college football, I'm all for that as well. I would just also like to see the teams below that go ahead and play for something as well. You heard that GERD wants everybody to get a trophy. You're part of the problem, son. You're part of the problem. No, I want, maybe I've been watching too much soccer. Um, <laughs> I, I saw it once. That was probably too much. Well, I don't Steve want everybody to get a trophy. I just want every champion to get a trophy. <laughs> 